label Catholics or label Catholicism. I don't think Dr. Groshen needs much of an introduction. Uh, if you had a chance to check out his uh, his his uh, presence, his appearance on our Instagram channel, it was quite humorous. Um, I don't think I'll ever get the image of his coat pulled over his head out of my mind. But, uh, are you about ready, good doctor? Yeah. Oh, is Cecily doing the introduction? What does the representative for Squirrel Peerage have to say? That's kind of past. Is now. that past that the squirrel's lost? Yeah, yeah, the squirrel's lost, but I appreciate everybody's support in that. Um, today we have another message for you, though. So just to prepare you for this talk, this talk is how to be nothing more than the plain definition minus any and all additives. It's like a cow. I know a lot about cows. Um, her name is Oak Maple Alley, and she brings forth good milk, frothy and thick. It tastes good because it is good, and instead of putting it in this plus that, how about we do not that? How about a cold glass of milk, just milk, nothing more? Also, bread to butter, so little time, but at least like the milk, the butter's homemade, and made by Oak Maple Alley, too. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for, for being here. As always, I'm very, very happy to take questions at the conclusion of the talk if you have any to post. Are you going to use the microphone? Uh, yeah, I think I should. <laughs> All right, everyone can hear me okay? That's good. That makes a difference. That's great. Okay, labels are a conspicuous and serviceable part of everyday life. Strolling aimlessly through cloth aisles in the twilight and summer, the streets outside calm, devoid of autumn's buzzing hive, the air devoid of even slight breezes, and nothing through those large panes but an indigo backdrop to an orange tinted sunset viewed best from the old Moscow Pullman Highway. Hear yourself breezing along, dropping fruit into your hand cart, fighting fruit flies flying towards the freezer section, where with one fell swoop, you can stop slide open the frosted door, and pick up a container of organic mint chocolate chip ice cream for inspection. Precious label, what a treasure trove of secrets you divulge at first glance for information. Milk, but of course, the chocolate chips too. But don't forget about the xanthan gum, the locust bean gum, the cane sugar, the cocoa butter, all of it churning your spoon and then your stomach. The tune of nine grams saturated fat, 35 milligrams of cholesterol, and 19 grams of sugar. And that's just for suggested serving size. But who can fall to your puritanical position? Labels, what technology? Right there in the palm of your hand. You love this stuff, the ice cream, but not even the 69 milligrams of calcium or the 97 milligrams of potassium or the three grams of protein are enough to move the container from the freezer to the checkout line. You put it back. Then a couple in matching Eli and Charlotte's Dairy Farm t-shirts walk past you. Maybe they'll take the ice cream. Then you put your mask back up over your nose and mouth because one of the cloth employees glares at you like you just backed over his pet with a bulldozer. After first strapping said pet with a plastic explosive, the explosive exploding as the pet was crushed like plastic. Okay, dude, oh, got it. Chill, it's back on. See, the mask is like a label too. It says without a spoken word, that you actually never mind. What is on my mind is another label, a name tag. Yeah, name tags are labels, labels too. That the very reprimanding part he was wearing which left me perplexed. It read, R. Bipples, J. Paint Portfolio. Should people like this be giving advice about anything? Well, we like labels. We make use of labels all the time. How else would you know that athlete's foot cream removes itching, burning, crackling, scaling, and discomfort? if not for labels. How else would you know that 100% sodium bicarbonate, also known as baking soda, not to be confused with hardy partying frat bro Michael Sedaris, aka baked soda, can be dissolved one or two cups into a warm bath for a 30 minute soak, if not for labels. And how I ask you, would you be aware of football coach and now second time hippo lecture subject, Mike Leach, 
and his most memorable quotes without the search engine label telling you you're in the right place to type and find. I think the most important thing is confidence he wants to find. A lot of people think they're confident, but if you think about it, they're not. If you get into a fight, into a fight don't take your helmet off, he once told his players. We're looking for smart football players, not dumb ones. And who could ever leave out the following gem from his time as WSU head coach concerning dating advice? aimed at young men on the flues trying to find that most special girl. First, take her to CD's Pit House Barbecue in Moscow. If she will get her hands dirty with some great BBQ, you will know you're on the right track. And so we like labels, but there is a place where labels are not just inappropriate, but ineffectual to the point of hands up, palms out, discombobulated befuddlement. Labels are bad when it comes to Catholicism and label Catholics. Those of us who celebrate being labeled a blank Catholic are losers and should be publicly called out. I hope when they order ice cream in the summer, the scoops on their cone fall off of the pavement before they can eat them. There is no such thing as a liberal, conservative, modern, traditionalist, pre or post Vatican II, black, white, social justice, environmental, Asian, American, European, African, Catholic. Now, okay, there is a based and red pill, 3% body fat, 700 pound deadlift food farmer and beekeeper Catholic. Let's save that for another time. You are either a Catholic or you are not a Catholic. You either accept the full measure of what Holy Mother Church proposes for our belief, and may God help you strive daily to live this out, or you do not. Label Catholics. Don't be one. Don't be a label Catholic. Put honey and milk into your coffee and move artificial sweetener. Do. Be a label Catholic. Don't. Hunt whale sharks from a helicopter with a spear. Don't. But be a, be a label Catholic, also no. High school scenario. You're a sophomore guy and kind of geeky and a bit lacking in self-confidence, like Mike Leach explained. But then out of the blue, a really pretty senior girl who's got a great personality and also volunteers the local animal shelter where she fixes puppies, her paws, really their hearts, asks you to go to the fall harvest festival dance. Should you say yes, yes, go with her. Also, now you're a legend. But then you find out she started a charity called Dates for the Needy. Nerds are people too. <laughs> this complicates matters and probably deflates the balloon of your recently swollen ego substantially. Just don't be a label Catholic. That's what I'm getting at. So who are our targets? Rather, the stars of our show. In the order, we'll discuss them. Environmental Catholics, conservative Catholics, liberal Catholics, pre-Vatican II Catholics, Vatican II Catholics. Five out of probably 50, if not 500 possibilities, we just don't have the time and I the energy to cover them all. Also, <clears throat> boo, did I scare you? Sorry if I did. Also, I honestly hope the conspiracy theory where the government recruits a bunch of badgers and augments them robotically to become people smart in the size of a moose is not true. Environmental Catholics, for you, the book of Genesis and St. Francis of Assisi do not go far enough. To be a steward of the earth, responsibly using its resources and gifts, working for cleaner water and air for all, is not enough. Like all heresies and the labels that signify them, you must go to the extreme and without compromise. And so we can hear environmental Catholicism in articles like one by playwright Dorothy Fortenberry, entitled, Latin Mass, Women Priests, Celibacy, Climate Change Will Make All the Church's Arguments Pointless. Climate change, Ms. Fortenberry argues, is far and away the most important issue Catholics should be concerned with. She literally says, I will submit to you that climate change is the most important thing you could possibly care about. If you are concerned by dehumanized sexuality, you should be concerned about climate change. If the pace of modern life feels frenetic, the tone of discussion feels unforgiving and opportunistic, you should be concerned about climate change. I have my opinions about the Latin mass, clerical celibacy, women priests, gay marriage, but these don't matter because climate change is going to render all these arguments preposterous. No, you know, Dorothy, sorry. I have a feeling you're not in Kansas anymore when it comes to rational argument. So following what you said, the next time I flip off someone in traffic, that tone of discussion you mentioned, I can just blame climate change. I can blame climate change for all the gross sexualization of our culture that's been rotting away the core of our common morality for decades now. Like, well, you know, my, promisc my promiscuous friend who hooked up with everyone in college and left a sorry trail of broken hearts in his wake, it's not really his fault. Climate change made him do it. 
And so when over the next century, the planet heats up a few degrees, we're supposed to take seriously the proposition. The church is going to say something like, clerical celibacy used to be X, Y, and Z, but you know, nothing changes theology like the weather. So I guess we got to throw everything out the window. It's absurd. It's label Catholicism. Even if the average daily temperature is 150 degrees and you melt if you step outside and there's no fresh water left and so on and so forth, this earth is not your true and final destination. You are going to die and you must above all seek salvation, heaven. Therefore, maybe the dire circumstances Fortenberry describes would actually make the questions she claims will become irrelevant, more relevant as your chances of, of dying sooner and standing before God will have exponentially increased. You've got to have your soul all the more in order and quicker too. I'm all about taking care of the earth and loving our planet so as to leave it beautiful for future generations, but never at the expense of what our Lord has commanded, seek first the kingdom of God. Perhaps most gross of all is the near adulation environmental Catholics heap on Swedish climate activist Greta Thunberg. Jesuit priest Father Thomas Rees, in an article entitled Greta Thunberg, a prophet for Advent, asks, as a member of the boomer generation, which obviously begs the knee jerk meme reaction, okay, boomer, as a member of the boomer generation, I wonder, are we stupid or are we evil? Future generations will have to live in the world we ruined. Claiming that Greta Thunberg is an Advent prophet giving us hope but challenging us to prepare the way of the Lord, Father Reese cites the following Thunberg quote in support of his claim. The hope that she gives. I want you to panic. I want you to feel the fear I feel every day. And then I want you to act. I want you to behave like our house is on fire because it is. Nothing signals the coming Christians, uh, the coming Christmas season quite like that. So to another Thunberg quote from the same article where if you listen closely enough, you can almost hear children laughing while they sled and skate on frozen ponds under the soothing melodies of Christmas carols. You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. How dare you? No, sorry, Greg. I'm pretty sure it was you or your parents or your team, whoever that is, that made the decision for you to stop attending school. You know, like normal kids, school where dreams are born and childhood is lived in large measure to strike for the climate and subsequently receive international media and monetary support. So you could travel the world doing your best 62-year-old librarian scolding Johnny and his friends for talking too loud impression. Definitely no contradiction in being against carbon emissions, yet having an enormous personal carbon footprint from all that flying around the globe. And try telling some poor kid in Africa or the Middle East whose childhood and dreams were actually stolen by war and famine, that you who crisscrossed the continents like a movie star, uh, excuse me, a prophet, are the victim here. But fear not, this does not stop even non-Catholics from traffic, trafficking in environmental Catholicism when it comes to Thunberg. You see, even despite all of the previous information, all the contradictions and head scratchers, Thunberg being a prophet of climate change means that facts or logic doesn't matter. I really think that President Brandon, I mean Biden, said it best when he explained we chose, we choose truth over facts. And the truth here, like former Archbishop of Canterbury, Roman, Rowan Williams being known, is that God has raised up a prophet in Greta Thunberg in a way that no one can, could predict. She has said things no one else could have said. And just know that if you object to environmental Catholicism from, let's say, a traditional base, meaning simply Catholicism is what Catholicism is, and we cannot allow any issue, no matter how important, to supersede the ultimate meaning of the faith, that it is about the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, about salvation, be prepared for pushback from environmental Catholics. A Twitter user named Dinah Climate Change Voter with a blue planet emoji following her handle will happily let you know that, quote, traditional Catholic on Twitter is code for white supremacists. I think it may be the same in the Supreme Court. Conservative Catholics, maybe I should call you Trump Catholics. Now, look, I understand, trust me, we all have our heroes, and society needs people to look up to and serve as role models. Who hasn't read Teresa Blazo's The Story of a Soul and tried to live her little way, doing even the smallest tasks with extraordinary love? who hasn't encountered Pierre Giorgio Frassati and thought I, a young person in the world, would love to sanctify my little circle of influence as he did. And who hasn't looked at the example of Donald Trump from his insatiable lust for money, his quotes on women, about women's body parts, the gold toilets in Trump Tower, and his heartwarming comments about Christians. Can you believe that bullshit? 
Trump said following a laying on the hands prayer session with evangelicals. Can you believe people believe this bullshit and not thought that's the guy? That's the Christian candidate I've been waiting for all my life. Christ tells us to welcome the foreigner and the downtrodden, and that the way we treat the less fortunate will be held up as the metric of how we treated him. Trump, whose father taught him that life is a Darwinian contest between killers and losers, on border security. Now, before I give you the quote, let me say that I am all in favor of border security, that I support a country's border, and we cannot, certainly cannot, in the vein of some misappropriated perversion of charity, go full open borders and invite whoever into the country. That too is not Christian. For an authentically Christian view on immigration is not just about welcoming the stranger, it is, but also about striving to protect the safety and security of a nation's citizens. This including not undercutting the livelihoods of those people by forcibly importing a cheap, cheap labor, labor force you intend to exploit. All that being true, I want to present you with a Trump anecdote and ask you to compare it to, for example, Christ's words in Matthew 25. I was hungry and gave me food. I was thirsty and gave me drink. A stranger and you welcomed me naked and you clothed me. And ask yourself, does this sound like the words of a truly Christian politician? Privately, the president had often talked about fortifying a border wall with a water-filled trench, stocked with snakes or alligators, prompting aides to seek a cost estimate. He wanted the wall electrified with spikes on top that could pierce human flesh, and publicly suggested that soldiers shoot migrants if they threw rocks, but he backed off when his staff told him that was illegal. But later in a meeting, an aide recalled, he suggested they shoot migrants only in the legs to slow them down. That's not allowed either, they told him. I respect if you support Trump, maybe you voted for Trump because of his defense of life. A position which, irrespective of whether it's heartfelt or not, meaning if he actually believes it, or not, and with that I cannot say, obviously, only God can judge that, something that has been truly Catholic. Donald Trump's presidential pro-life record and his appointment of pro-life judges is commendable. But if you are a label Catholic, conservative term, Trump Catholic, who views Trump as a fully and authentically Christian politician, I would have to object. If you can't tell if a candidate is sincere in their faith or just using it opportunistically to gar garner support and votes, which is probably the literal definition of what it means to be a politician, <clears throat> say or do whatever gets you elected, there's a good chance it's that if it walks like a duck, talks like a duck paradigm. I leave conservative slash Trump label Catholics with a personal anecdote from my in-laws kitchen in Nampa, Idaho. We, my in-laws, my wife, myself, were gathered there after mass talking to two guests, parishioners and daily mass goers too, the women of this two guest couple very much into Trump Catholicism. After going on and on about all the wonderful things Trump was doing for Catholics and for his restoration of quote American values, she said, and I forget what term she used precisely, that Trump was either a new King David or the successor to King David. It was at that moment that I was like, all right, I'm gonna leave now. <laughs> liberal, liberal Catholics. I think I've already given them enough ink in the earlier environmental section, but I'll say briefly, briefly that the problem with liberal label Catholics, as I see it, is that like the environmental label Catholics, they take their favorite pet issue and raise it not just above all others, but above the faith itself. It's probably too simplistic as comparisons go, but I think label Catholics on the right are susceptible to error by way of cult of personality, elevating people like Trump or maybe a media personality like Michael Morris, I am a church militant.com label Catholic, or just look at the breakaway SSPX named in honor of a guy who's truly an absolute boss pope. Pope St. Pius X, but whose memory has been mud muddied and scuffed up by this, his association with this right-wing anti-Vatican II label Catholicism. Label Catholics on the right gravitate towards exaggerating a person. Label liberal Catholics of the left exaggerate and so obsess upon singular issues. Priestly celibacy, feminism, the church, racism slash anti-racism. And we see much of this, upholding certain highly selected issues as preeminently important in the general outlook, see favorable coverage of arguably the most famous Catholic in America today, President Joe Biden. I'll say the following about Biden, and all of it is sincere. It's cool that we have a Catholic president. Biden does seem like a reasonably nice guy, someone you want to have a beer with, talk to. It's awesome that he attends mass and carries a rosary in his pocket. It's also true that it's absolutely scandalous and embarrassing how frequently his public positions and actions, most especially on abortion, fly in direct opposition to the Catholic faith he claims to practice devoutly and insists form his thinking. When Mario Cuomo invented the I'm personally opposed but double speak in 1984 at Notre Dame, 
And perhaps the year most appropriate owing to the terms fundamentally Orwellian sly dishonesty. It was BS. It is still BS today. Would any politician say, I'm personally opposed to slavery, but you know, I'm going to do all I can to vote for laws that enshrine it. Don't want to be imposing my Catholic beliefs on others. But this is exactly where Biden et al. stand on abortion. It's just another variant of label Catholicism, meaning it's not Catholicism. But these liberal label Catholics fall over themselves, making excuses for Biden, arguing that because we see him at mass and he carries a rosary, the pertinent questions, of course, are does he pray the rosary? Is he in a state of grace to receive the Holy Eucharist at Mass? God alone can judge. And most especially that he supports their own personal label Catholic issue, all is forgiven. For some of these liberal label Catholics, it is not love, sorry, St. Paul, but support for the UN Sustainable Development Goals that covers a multitude of sins and serves as evidence that these Catholic politicians are in fact devout Catholics. I'll direct you to a recent article by journalist Michael Sean Winters, author of the book, Left at the Altar, how the Democrats lost the Catholics and how the Catholics can save the Democrats, entitled, in 2021, it became obvious the U.S. bishops and the Pope are singing from different hymnals. This piece appeared in the National Catholic Reporter, a journal subtitled The Independent News Source. But that is, as far as I can tell, further to the left than Bernie Sanders in Moscow, Russia, being gifted a first edition of Marxist Das Kapital by AOC, while Fidel Castro sings the international, international a cappella. A photographic, a photographic negative of the National Catholic Reporter would be a periodical entitled Donald Trump Catholic Patriot King David Bald Eagle Catholic Build That Wall Magazine, the independent news source. <laughs> I'm going to read to you a few citations from Winters' article to illustrate the points I made above and earlier concerning President Biden. Bemoaning that his magazine had named LA Archbishop Jose Gomez as Catholic Newsmaker of the Year, Winters complains of the Bishops' Conference catastrophically narrow focus on President Joe Biden's support for legal abortion. The bishop should instead promote Biden articulating the importance Catholic social teaching has had on his political views. In other news, it's too bad that when you put a block of ice into a hot tub, the hot water melts ice. Instead, we should talk about how ice has argued that hot water makes it even harder and more solidly frozen. The drawn out squabble as Winters frames the bishop's meeting showed a conference torn between the lousy theology of the cultural culture warriors who think Biden and other pro-choice politicians should be denied communion, and the otherwise universal practice the church that distinguishes between lawmaking about the evil action and the performance of the evil action itself. Oh, we got it. So Catholic politicians can support any law, no matter how evil, no matter that this support will lead to real evils in the real world, so long as they claim they don't actually, you know, support it. And here I have to agree with Winters. I bet, if I, I bet if I walked up to someone and punched them in the face, they'd be upset. But if I told them first I'm personally opposed to violence and then punched them in the face, we'd be good. No harm, no foul. And the second punch, post personal objections, wouldn't even hurt because it's the thought that counts. Good intentions, as every grandmother will remind you, paved the road to heaven. Winters continues along this liberal label Catholic path throughout the article because, of course, Anyone who likes, quote, anything on the right is display, displaying symptoms of schismatic tendency. It's good Pope Francis issued Tradiciones Custodes because the ideological movement had abused the concessions that it had been granted. Winters doesn't specify what these abuses were or are, so I'll have to do some guesswork. 1970s style architecture and moan line folk hymns paired with parishers, parishers wearing basketball shorts or some hardly dressed at all is good but liking Gothic cathedrals and Gregorian chants and the use of a common language that actually unified all Catholics around the world is bad and abuse. Okay, maybe he doesn't specify because the only thing suffering abuse here is the ego of liberal label Catholics who don't understand why no one likes their music and handhold it and greet the person next to you before mass for 40 minutes in comparison to so much richness in the tradition rich large, writ large stretching back over millennia. Winters mentions the removal of Cardinal Robert Serra, in my opinion, the greatest churchman alive today, from his position as prefect of the Congregation for Divine Worship and the Sacraments, as if that was a good thing. But maybe it's all as nonsensical as the following two tweets lay bare. Responding to a man claiming, I was once called a white nationalist because I supported a more traditional church. The irony is I'm a light brown-skinned Mexican-American. Another Twitter user wrote, future headline, Cardinal Sarah becomes the first white supremacist pope. <laughs> I have a feeling that Cardinal Sarah being a black man from Africa 
would matter little to nothing to some liberal label Catholics who drowning in a swamp of identity politics would no doubt wholeheartedly and without second thought endorse such a characterization. On the final two categories, pre-Vatican II label Catholics and post-Vatican II label Catholics, two that I'm gonna combine into one, I'm gonna say the least. Both are so annoying, period. Both make a label out of Vatican II. Instead of properly esteeming it without overdoing it, they go overboard. They go full overkill into buzzkill as much as if the guy who rides back from a joyride on your motorcycle not only fails to park it in the designated spot, but accelerates over the curb and then really kicks it into high gear going full speed catapult like airborne over the rim of the Grand Canyon. And then down and down and down all the while you're just standing there puzzled like why did he just not park in this one? And now our whole vacation is ruined too. These people, pre and post Vatican II label Catholics, why don't they park and dismount, meaning shut up already? They act like Vatican II is the only council in church history, like it's the most important event in church history. The pre Vatican II label Catholics seeing in it everything wrong, corrupt, and conspiratorial. The post Vatican II label Catholics seeing in it the birth, birth of a new church or some kind of nonsense like that, while simultaneously regarding everything that happened before the 1960s as bad or useless or irrelevant. Both of these label Catholics need to stop because all label Catholics need to stop. Label Catholicism, it's bad. I hope you've gotten at least that by this point in the talk. And I can't think of any better way to sum up the label Catholicism in this last pre and post Vatican II category than by an interview I recently watched with a famous Catholic internet personality who will remain anonymous because the story is so embarrassing. He referred to himself, this guy who specializes in the pre and post Vatican II label Catholic debate as, quote, the bad boy of Catholicism. The host almost lost it, almost died of laughter on the spot, but somehow kept it together. I almost called the hospital to report severe injuries to my cringe muscles. <laughs> See, don't be a label Catholic. It has substance abuse like negative effects on your brain and common sense. One of the worst symptoms being non sarcastically labeling yourself a Catholic bad boy. <laughs> now, in the etiquette of a proper roast, allow me to say something nice about the various personalities we've covered so far. From the accomplished playwright, Dorothy Fortenberry, to Father Reese, plus Trump and Biden, even Greta, be assured I wish for them what I wish for all and myself, happiness, well-being, now and forever. I respect them sincerely, even if I wish to criticize their ideas. And I surely could find myself on the poked end of critical appraisal. Just because I'm insanely good looking, super intelligent, and above all, very modest, doesn't mean I'm above criticism. <laughs> So I'm now taking you through a few labels. You've seen both the overreach and the efficiency, but you might rightfully ask, what does a non-label Catholic, just Catholic look like? What are his beliefs and general way of being? There happens to be such a person in our midst, in our town, in fact, and he works at the Moscow Co-op. R. Bibbles, J. Paint Portfolio. Is he originally from Atlantic, Cass County, Iowa, and the aforementioned faced and red pill 3% body fat, 700 pound deadlifting farmer and beekeeper Catholic, you already know. But so why is he working at the co-op if he's a farmer slash beekeeper? Wait, farmer and beekeeper and he cares about wearing masks? To all that I'll say, maybe if you spend more time minding your own business and reading and working out, you'd be even half the physical, intellectual, and philosophical specimen he is. And that would be really something, let me tell you, it's not too late to add a New Year's resolution. Paint Portfolio is a just Catholic. Catholic. He hates labels so much, he hires people to remove them from his clothing. He also hires people to photograph him and post the photos on Instagram. He hires other people to buy bots to make it look like he has way more followers than he really does. I didn't say he was perfect. He has 2.6 million followers on Instagram. He's a just Catholic Catholic because while caring about the environment, he doesn't worship it. He worships God. He hates the political left and right with equal fervor. They suck, all of them. And knowing this, he knows he can and will turn to the men and women of his faith for advice and inspiration but to politicians for comedy alone. He accepts Vatican II like he accepts all the church councils, like he accepts everything the church founded by Jesus Christ tells him to accept, likewise rejecting what the church rejects. He's just a Catholic, do you understand? And so he doesn't think of anything special that he believes life begins at conception or that marriage and the family are society's essential building blocks or that true love is both the emotional response and the conformity with the truth and always at the same time, because why is common sense supposed to be special? And it's kind of like this with everything from this label less Catholic, kind of like St. Augustine's motto to love God and then do whatever you want, which I'll add to in the light of paint portfolio and all those striving to be like him, just be a Catholic. 
live the Catholic faith in its fullness, but without additions, subtractions, exaggerations, and then just do whatever you want. Thank you. Okay, questions? Without the mic. I'm done with the mic. Yeah, so uh, my question is just one line. If you're going to label Catholic, so why would your book title uh, Confederate Catholic? I know. I, I would expand upon that by saying, as far as I understood from your book, um, the, the thesis of it was that it was possible that everything be Catholic, that those people were fully good Catholic and fully good Confederate. And I would assume, based on other things I've heard you say, Answer your first question, why did I write a book called Catholic and Confederate, which is true, and denounce label Catholics? Probably because I'm a liar, a terrible person. And like a, and like a politician, I'll say whatever, whenever. Like tomorrow, I'm going to give me a talk at New Standards tomorrow. Not really. It's actually just somebody reports. I'm really not. But imagine if I was about how you shouldn't be a label Christian. Um, that's the stupid, funny answer. The real answer is I'm actually not. In all these talks, and I love doing this so much because I think hopefully people get stuff out of it and we think about these things. I have no problem with actual labels. I actually really know. Actually, if someone's like, oh, I'm, I'm more of a conservative Catholic label, the very things I denounce, I actually necessarily don't have a problem with it. You just can't go overboard with it. Right. It's it's overboard in the label sense, in the this, what this paper argued, when people define that and supersede their faith with that. Like if it comes down to choosing between being a leftist Catholic, if you choose left or Catholic, I choose leftist. And I'm more of a leftist who happens to be Catholic, as opposed to we should just be Catholic and whatever else fills in, fine. But the, the, the real on the nose answer I can give you is, I hate when people say American Catholics, the American Catholic Church. There's no such thing. There's a Catholic Church in America. That's the specific thing. There's a universal Catholic Church. There's no Belgian Church. But if a writer, if I'm reading an article and someone's like, oh, the Belgian Church, the French Church, not everybody's a heretic. No, right? It's just, it's, it's not, he's not arguing it to the, the bad level. It's a turn of phrase. So in my book, calling people Catholic Confederates, well, that's understandable to people, right? So and I'm fine with people using labels. I would say simply don't overdo it. Don't be obsessed with the kind of like, the only thing you should be obsessed with is Jesus Christ, your faith and the Catholic. And then after that, like whatever kind of diverse opinions you have is fine. Don't let them supersede your faith. That's kind of what I'm doing. And I guess, yeah, part two of the book, there's Scott sometimes to go there. I can't speak for God. I have no idea. Um, yeah. No, no, but I'm serious, actually. I wish, I wish more people would say that. I hate these kind of like online people who are like, oh, I know, I know. You don't know anything. You know, it's like, trust me, I know. I have 100,000 subscribers. Trust me, you know. And like, yeah, probably, right? I mean, I love that, that Jesus Christ, is he man or God? This is our uh, spirit and life last week. It's like, he's true God and true man. Catholicism, Bishop Barron always said, he's both and. God is ultimate mercy, divinity, ultimate mercy, and ultimate justice. How do those work together? I think I would answer 100% yes to you. I have no idea how that works with God. Yeah, I would never presume to say, I have. The, I love that uh, chaplain of divine mercy, a hope in Christ, endless mercy, but he's perfect justice as well. How is the balance? I leave that to God. Uh, this is a little bit on the heavier side, but um, how do you fight the negative labels that non-Catholics throw on Catholics. Like, for example, with the abortion issue, I've heard people say, oh, you're not really pro-life. You're just pro-birth and you don't care about the person after they're born and all these other things. So how, I guess, how do you handle that? I'd say to any criticism, whatever kind, be as alpha as possible and give the impression that you don't care. <laughs> <laughs> they want you to care. They want you to go for like, oh, I'm sorry. I just like, great, cool, bye. Um, thanks for the coffee. Um, I think there is actually a point, point of that where it's like, sorry, like I think often about don't throw your, your pearls before swine. I'll talk to anybody, like I'm for real. And like, I honestly, it's not that I have a thick skin. I hope I do, but I'm not offended at all. People can like rip Catholicism in my face. I am like, okay, like you have a free will. I respect that. 
So do I. You think that this is blank, blank, blank. I think this. I respect you as a person. And we can, can talk. All people have, we're all children of God. And even if they respond like, well, I don't believe in God, we're all rational creatures. We're all human beings. I think not caring. I think people will like, if someone gets up in your face, often, I really think often they're looking for you to like go full meltdown and whine and complain. And if they drop that on you and you're like, awesome, and you walk away, they'll become obsessed with you in a good way. Like, why is he so scared in his faith? Why did he just destroy me with one word? I actually want to investigate what he believes. I would like not, not take the bait with people. And actually, if you can maybe fake it till you make it, but if you actually cannot really care, it's better. Like if you actually cannot care, I don't care at all. Like what certain people think, like that sounds maybe cold, but I don't. So don't, don't let it bother you. And, and ulti ultimately too, right? All you can control is your own actions. So if you honestly are trying to, God help you, God help all of us, be a saint, be holy, right? doing the right things, there's nothing else you can do. And I definitely, I don't want to be misunderstood, treat everyone with charity. But if someone wants to argue and fight with you, like they already, they, their argument is dumb, no matter what, when it's going to be something like that, they've already epic self-owned and failed. And you're just like giving them what they want. And what they really need is you go to full alpha. You're like, oh, he put me in my place. I needed that. I've been told yes all my life. He finally told me no, my argument sucked. And now I want to reconsider everything I believe. Let's do that. <laughs> You say, you know, don't label yourself. So what in your words would be What's a person who honestly tries to first, in one sentence, maybe with some semi points but a person who's first, first, well catechized, someone who knows the faith, who's read the catechism, read the Bible, been well instructed, Someone who's well informed and knows, first of all, what he's supposed to believe, semicolon, and then tries to live that to the best of his ability, knowing he can do nothing without the grace of God. St. Paul's beautiful thing there, but for the grace of God, go on. All of us are totally unprofitable servants, can do nothing. That's a real Catholic. Someone who first, number one, maybe it's two parts only, three parts. Part one actually knows their faith. If you don't know your faith, you're like, you're already roasted, like you're already, you've already lost. Like, what are you talking about? You know, like you're claiming to do whatever. We have no clue what you're even saying. So first learn the faith, please. Like all of us, we never stop learning. First learn the faith and actually try to do your best and live it. It's probably going to be, be bad for you in a good way. But you're going to realize like, oh, I really can't be a Republican or a Democrat or a Green Party person or like Club Wales to the max. Like I have to actually just be a Catholic. And it seems like you have to like, get ready to sit on the fence and get like pelted with eggs. Because when you come out like full Catholic, everyone's going to hate your guts, right? Like, no, you need to go full right wing. No, you need to be full left. Wing. Like, you hate people. You're not you're going to get attacked from all ends. You guys should be like, this is awesome. Like, I love this. You can live for that. Like Chesterton said, indeed, the real Catholic is the person who people consider too short and too tall, too tolerant, too intolerant, too mean, too nice, everything. Because if he's being attacked from all sides, he doesn't fit anywhere. He's probably on that, that perfect truth. And that's, that's more like Aristotle's golden mean, not like some kind of compromise law position, which is terrible. I mean, like real Catholicism is not left or right wing or anything. It's not, sorry to break it to anyone. Uh, it's just not, and that's not me. I'm, I'm not smart or, or anything. That's like, you know, read the church fathers, read serious people. You can't put it into a single political party. If America actually had a true Catholic political party that allied with Catholic values, there'd be no members. Everyone would be like, well, I don't like this. This is bad. <laughs> you know, like, so like, Know the faith, actually try to freaking live it, and then pray your butt off for the grace to, to be able to do that. That's a real Catholic. You're taking a question being an Astros fan. You know what? <laughs> an Astros fan. An Astros fan. Yeah. The Astros, um, because of them cheating, the cheating scandal, they should be, their, the memory of them should be wiped from the face of the earth. So I won't even use them for now. No, it's not anything like that. <laughs> <laughs>
Great question. So many, so many things in your question. Really great. First, to what you said, that's exactly what I'm saying. That's verbatim the whole point of my talk is that we just, there's too many labels and not helpful labels. Some perhaps are helpful, but that are the primary thing, Catholicism is secondary. Please make Catholicism primary. It's the first thing I'm saying. Uh, what happened to all those people? They're definitely still here. I remember a great story about one of the ancient like boss guys, like St. Anthony of Egypt, <laughs> who like didn't eat anything for 20 years at the Eucharist and fought the devil and he emerged out of the desert and he had like six back abs. I'm like, how are you not dead? <laughs> he was so holy, he was perfect, like physically, spiritually, whatever. I think one of these guys, Anthony, was telling an acolyte, uh, his, the guy in training asked him like, uh, um, you know, Anthony, in, in years in the future, are people gonna fast like us? Are they gonna keep vigil all night? He's like, no, they'll be horrible. Like, they'll do none of that. But they'll be greater than us because we fight the devil chained and they'll fight him unchained. And anyone disagreed and we fight the devil unchained. Society is nuts and psycho. It's crazy. Like normal beliefs that people would have claimed five years ago are now like you're a racist, you're blah, 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 you're this. Like normal beliefs. Like I believe people should be good. Oh, you mean good to like form a fascist party? You know, like <laughs> anything you say is like, don't lose your train of thought. I promise I'll come to you in one second. Please, I'll feel bad if you forget your question. No. But I'll say in, in, the, in the end, um, the, the last point you made, it's, it's a very, the middle point you made, it's a very hard balance. I hate cheesy Catholicism. I hate it. Talk about a label. I hate, like, come with me and find how happy I am. Like, I hate that. It's terrible. I really like, like, mysterious, like, men and women who are like, like, I'm better than you. I'm not going to tell you, like, what I'm about. <laughs> I like that. Like, you have to work for it. Like, if you want to know, like, my prayer, I'm not, you're not invited. I'm not gonna share with you my testimony. It's none of your business. Like something mysterious and serious, kind of like black coffee about it. Catholicism today too often is kind of stupid frappuccino type crap. And it's like, that's why I'm always so hard on these popular Catholic speakers. They're so cool, some of these guys. And like they do these interviews on, on uh, like the Catholic bad boy guy. I'm not gonna mention who he is. <laughs> it's like, that guy, I, I, I'm done. I'm gonna go to this question, but that's it. That, that's the state of modern like, yeah, cool online Catholicism. Like, like I, I have zero notoriety. If, I, if I'm ever to a point where someone invites me to like a conference, I will never do that. I swear, like kill me if I do that. I won't be like, it's great day to be Catholic, gang. Like crap, I will never do that, I swear. So you keep, everyone keeps talking about left and right disciples, but if we're all obedient to the teachings of the Catholic Church, the truth is the center point always. So I don't tell anybody on left or right I totally agree with you. And then yeah. 99% of the world could be on one side or the other, but it never changes where the middle is. So the Catholic Church puts us in the middle. We are the truth. And if I can piggyback up what you said, I think there's a, someone had a question over here. Is that correct? But yeah. if, okay, I'll go to you and you. I would, like, I'm really torn right now. So I want to go, go home and drink tons of beer, but I also want to talk to you guys all night. So please keep the questions coming. I really, if you have, there's no more questions after this, but don't feel like, oh, he wants to leave. Like, I love, I love this. Um, <laughs> going to your point back there, what you said about um, kind of the middle. And I, I did what I told you not to do and lost my train of thought. But I think it's like, oh no, okay. That, that all kind of like heresies in society are always like extremes. They're always extremes. Right? Like sex is the best example, right? Like Catholicism in the, the theology of the body, this is great. Like God bless John Paul and Christopher West, who made it like understandable or whatever. That's, that's really, I'm sure, very, very helpful to a lot of people. Like, yeah, the Catholic view on sex is like super sensual, super about physical, but also very respectful and all. I'm like, society can't deal with that. They can't deal with the middle. It's either like I, you know, castrate myself and like jump off a cliff or something and like yeah, sex is bad, everyone's evil, like, and like not, there is a cult, I don't know if we, who, anyone hear of Heaven's Gate cult, they all committed mass, they all castrated themselves, like, they went full, like, that heresy of, like, the physical world is evil, that kind of Gnostic heresy, mm -hmm. and always that, or the typical college student, like, hook up with everyone, you know, sex is great, it's like a handshake, it's no big deal, and you're exactly <laughs> right, you're exactly right, that between, like, Heaven's Gate, which no one wants, and the college student, which leads to, like, just horrible problems, obviously, I'm not, that's no revelation, your point rings perfectly true. The middle isn't some kind of compromise. It's the perfect path. It's that narrow path. And you can apply that to everything, right? Well, politically, I, I challenge you almost, like in informal homework assignment, find me an issue where it's like good to be super extreme. Even like devout Catholic people often, 
like a Mother Teresa, are generally normal people. She was super boring. And it, I mean that to her credit. She just loved people. She wasn't like, oh, and by the way, also, uh, I need everyone to cut off their left ear and be part of the Sisters of Charity. Like weird stuff that people always fall into. Like it's always sanity, it's always the center. Yeah. Yeah. So your it seemed like your talk mainly focused on kind of the pitfalls of labeling. What when would you say that labels are appropriate? Or what's your criteria for appropriate labeling? I'm being totally sincere, I'm not trying to be funny. Like, don't take my advice on anything. Like, I'm not don't let, oh this this way, do this, right? I don't know. I, I, as I said again to Hunter's original question, I actually I don't have problems with labels. If tomorrow a person who's even at this talk is like, you know, I'm more of a kind of conservative Catholic, right? That's, I understand what you're saying. I have a problem with that's an excellent point about the middle of, ex, of extremism. I have a problem of like, that's my problem with Biden. Of like, it seems like I'm not trying to judge it, but that he's a he's a Democrat, and then the other stuff is added in. I wish he was a Catholic first, then a Democrat or a Republican or whatever. So labels, we live by labels. Like if I would, I, I'll give you a million labels. I'm American. I'm also Polish. I'm six foot two. I have blue eyes. I, every, everything you say is a label. It describes something. I, was, I hope the kind of humorous part of the talk, there's nothing that's not a label. Everything defines something. So use it like at your own discretion. I'm just saying it's not so much the labels. Maybe I could have subtitled this talk avoiding the extremes. That's the problem. The labels lead to extreme. It becomes like, this is, you know, there's this old tradition, I would pick it up again, do this tradition. It's not dumb like grandmother fight, it's beautiful. And whenever you hear blasphemy, say blessed be God forever, even like silently in your own heart. I remember saying this, I read this article where some like church in Sweden, the Swedish church, which I should already stop the story, enough said, but they, the leader of the Swedish church literally said, worse than what I read to you, that Greta Thunberg is the successor to Jesus Christ. I mean, this is what I'm talking about, right? Now, can you like Greta Thunberg? Totally. Is there a part of me that respects her? Sure. She's a brave kid. Like whatever the manipulation stuff, she's a 16-year-old girl getting so much garbage in the media and kind of stuff. And she's good, good for her. God bless her. But I'm saying, but if you honestly think that Greta Thunberg is a substitution for devotion to Christ, that's really, really bad. That's the point I'm trying to make. So go ahead, uh, someone else has, yeah. Yeah, of course. Just pick and choose certain parts, right? Sure. Think of passing reference that in that one sentence when I said there's this is five of like 500 things I could talk about of course there's a, a crush question of brevity I can't be wrong I can't give a three-hour talk you know I'm actually really impressed with some of these guys who do like four-hour live streams super chats and people watch it the whole time okay I don't think you guys want to be here for four hours you have to take that much time right and, and I said to you I don't have the energy I don't I research all of that the whole time I think you're 100 percent right I think basically it's like when Christ says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, the narrow path, the only solution, I keep coming back to your point, but it was very, very brilliant. That's the only solution is that middle point fixed on Jesus that is not extreme, that is just the truth, nothing but the truth. And so, yeah, you're right. Cafeteria Catholicism is bad. If you want a good book about that, James McCartan, spelled as you assume, wrote a book called, right, how would you spell it? XP5, right? McCartan. If you can't spell McCartan, if you can't spell McCartan, you have bigger problems, right? Uh, it's called Prayers of the Faithful. And he talks about in the later part of the book this thing called Sheilaism. And it's one of the people that he interviewed, this woman named Sheila. And she talks about how she's like this lapsed Catholic kind of whatever, lukewarm. I just pick and choose what I want. It's like, exactly, it's cafeteria Catholicism. But ultimately, the way I personalize whatever I want on Amazon and my Facebook page, that's how people treat religion. Take a part of this, part of that, a little bit of this. I've long been both aware of that and like despise that. Like, not despise it too strong. But like, rejected that and you wholeheartedly agree with me. Do I think it's the worst? I think like they're all bad. I think that, that John is not now, but he had a great point about 
what is a true Catholic? Just try to do that. Like instead of looking at it from a negative sense, if I want to avoid all these things, be positive and proactive and just try to be a good Catholic. And in doing so, you'll avoid all the kind of traps, or hopefully, and become, and then you can arrive at that mercy and justice place. Like, Lord, I honestly try my best. And like maybe, well done, my good and faithful servant, enter into your world. Like you actually try. Try as hard as you can, you'll avoid the rest. Maybe be positive on the attack, though, and try to be a good Catholic rather than just avoiding the, the bad stuff. So to kind of follow up, you're saying uh, labels are okay. It's somewhat natural, but beware of the over kind of over generalization and shortcomings. Yeah, I think you understood what I tried to say very, yeah. very well. Uh, like I'm very happy with that. Like message right. received. Yeah, I, I don't care. Like I, I don't have some kind of personal antipathy towards labeling yourself, whatever. It's maybe actually the, the kind of punchline would be actually you should have one label and it's just Catholic. Like that's your ultimate label. You have to be, to be alive is to have prejudices and opinions and you have ideas, but have that be the kind of North Star in your life, right? Hmm. What do you do with the like, European soccer guys when they clap back at the crowd when the game's over, right? It's really weird. Um, <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> I, scored, I scored two goals. Entertain you. Go home. Bye. Uh, next, just please note next week. It's so nice having you all here. Really, guys, you really touched me sincerely. I always get weirdly sincere after all the kind of sarcasm. Thank you. It's so nice to be with you. I hope you'll join us next week. Father, do you know where the venue is yet or no? Awesome. The Breakfast Club is the best venue. At the same time, or is it normal or different? I, I said let's start serving food at 6 30. So if you remember in past years, we can't take the club because that means we can't take the same line. If anyone doesn't know, I think everyone has had a bunch of people. They're really fun. They're very well attended, which is nice. It's ask me anything, which that's the definition. Just like whatever for me and Father, it's a really fun night. So hope to see you there. Thank you again so much. Thank you for doing the computer. You're welcome. It was not that I only had to meet someone one time.